we applied earlier on to have a signboard put up by DBKL to have a direction sign into our showroom. And they said, oh, boss, ah, tak boleh lah. That's like, kenapa? Oh, pilihan raya sampai lah. It's like, pilihan raya sampai, so my business stopped. I need the signboard lah, otherwise how do people know how to go in? It's like, alamak lah, it's a sudah reserve lah. Tok siapa? Diam, diam. Don't want to answer. And then, of course, what is the answer from the officer? Yeah, boss. Kalau you nak, tiga ribu lah. Saya boleh kau tim. Why do you all want to tolerate this way of doing business in this country? Do you want to continue having this kind of nonsense happen in your backyard? Yes or no? No. What is the other one? What I call O. CM, Operasi Cari Makan. And this is done just below, before the roundabout on weekends. Just uh, where Jalan Kuching. Before, as you come down from the highway, there's a double line. There's a double line that you need to cross in order to go into the roundabout. But then who is the one tapping by the side, ready to flag you down? <laughs> Operasi cari makan, selamat datang, selamat pagi Encik, selamat pagi, apa khabar? Not too good. Boleh tengok IC dan license? Boleh tengok IC dan license. You tahu apa salah? Saya tak tahu lah. Saya saya tak buat apa salah. Ya ada double line di sana lah. It's like double line. They have an operation to check people for double line. And yet, I see police cars on the north-south highway thinking that they are Fernando Alonso. <laughs> what on earth are you talking about for law enforcement? Oh, other double line. So, you are the salam. So, I said, yalah, saman. Saman? Yeah, saman. Ain't getting away. Then, of course, I pull out my my Christian card. Saya orang Christian. Saya tak boleh razwa. Of course, he said, then the fear of God comes upon him and he said, go, 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 go. <laughs> so you all now know a trick. In order to get past the police officer, just be Christian. <laughs> just be a good Christian. But then the thing is that we have now Amno coming and saying, if you vote for PAS, a Muslim party, you will vote for the DAP, who will then turn Malaysia into a Christian state. <laughs> Let me be very honest with you. Of course, they all fail mathematics, it's okay. My father built four Chinese schools in Kapong. They can go to one of them to learn their arithmetic. In Malaysia, we only have a small population of Christians. And yes, Lim Le Eng, our, our candidate for Member of Parliament, who you're all going to vote for, right or not? Yes! yes. Uh, Lim Le Eng, our Member of Parliament, happens to be a Christian. Hana Yo happens to be Christian. I happen to be Christian. So it seems from the outset that there are many people who are Christians in the DAP. And Lim Wan is also a Christian. So they said, oh, because all of these people are Christians. As a result, they have the agenda to turn Malaysia into a Christian state. And I can say, uh, with the law of safety, who, are the who is the majority religion in this country? Islam. More than 60%. What hope do us Christians have to turn Malaysia into a, Islam uh, to a Christian state? This is called, this is called empty rhetoric. They accuse Pakatan Raya of making empty promises, but I tell you, uh, they are the king of it. We actually learn from them. <laughs> and then I tell you one thing, uh, some more. They also say that, oh, well, you know, at the end of the day, the DAP and uh, whoever, oh, they can't work with PAS. Lah. So, a vote for PAS is a vote for DAP, and DAP is going to turn Malaysia into a Christian state, but since we can't work with PAS, then everything will fall apart anyway. So, of course, in the newspapers, it says that a vote for pass is a vote for DAP. I mean, a vote for DAP is a vote for pass. Muslim state. Oh my gosh, Muslim state. 
They are all going to chop off my head. They are going to chop off my hand. They are going to chop off my arms and chop off my other stuff. <laughs> PG-13. But the thing is that in order to have a constitutional amendment, in order to implement Hudud law, you need 148 members of parliament to actually approve the law from being passed. Keep this number in your mind, uh, 148, and you go home. How many Muslims are contesting for parliamentary seats in total? Only 120 parliamentary seats. So unless you can tell me that my fellow Christian brothers and sisters in Sabah and Sarawak approve of implementing Hudud law in Malaysia, Hudud law will not become a reality. So this is the assurance to all my non-Muslim friends that Hudud, MCA can bang, bang, bang on it. It will never happen in Malaysia for that reason only. So I hope that clears it up. Because this morning I had my auntie running to me, Oh my gosh, you see the Star newspaper or not? Hudud is official. <laughs> I said, Akko, you're reading the star again, is it? <laughs> Where else can I get the news? Malaysia Kini. Oh, how to use, ah? Huh? Here is the problem that we have today, ladies and gentlemen. Too much misinformation is getting out. So I would like to challenge all of you to help play your part to get rid of these fancies that Barisan National has put in the minds of the people that this is the reality that we are facing that if you elect the DAP in, the DAP will allow Hudud. I say that the DAP doesn't have to do anything also Hudud will not happen. Because it is protected under our constitution that all rights and religions of the people of this land is protected. As a result, we at Pakatan Rakyat have no intention of changing that. We are here to stand up for you, your rights and your interests. <laughs> On the issue of the NEP, I just wanted to talk about the new economic policy. Now, the new economic policy was a policy which was formulated in the 1970s. And in the 1970s, of course, this happened in the aftermath of the May 13 riots to actually alleviate the Malay population out of a position of poverty, to be on comparative economic status with the Chinese community. For me, frankly, a noble cause. Why? Because you help the people that need help. But who did the NEP end up helping? Krunis la. I go into very ulu areas. One of them is called Kampong Tualang Seka, and another one is called Chendero, up in Pera. And basically, we ask them, You are the, you are a you. They say, Yeah. You miskin, ah? Yeah. NEP are the bantu, ah? Apa NEP? Apa NEP? Lima puluh tahun sampai sekarang tak ada apa. So, even. When I did dramas alongside with Dato Sri Awal Ibrahim, he goes to the Malay areas, the Malay kampongs, and he says that I will get rid of the NEP. He says that we cannot stand as a country which is divisive among racial lines. Not because the NEP initially wasn't a good program, it is because it failed in its objective completely. It only exist to serve the interests of cronies. Let me ask you one thing, la, the Bumi Putra discount, 5%. If you are going to buy an apartment in Monkiara, do you really think that you will miss the 5% discount la, if you are Bumi Putra? If you are going to go to Sitya Eco Park and you buy one of the nice new bungalows over there, do you think that you really need it because you are economic, uh, economically disadvantaged? So, at the end of the day, these policies don't actually help the people which is supposed to help, which is the poor rural Malays. Haris Ibrahim came 
And let's look here, and he said that 12% of our population is under hardcore poverty. And ladies and gentlemen, 75% of them are Malays. 75% of the hardcore poor in this country are Malays. So we at Pakatan Raya, we have already made a commitment that we are going to get rid of policies based on race and put in a policy based on needs. If you don't need it, you don't get it. You don't need subsidies.